Good evening, everybody. Uh, bring this uh, regular meeting of council to order for November the 2nd, 2021. Uh, tonight, uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni is unable to attend, as with uh, Councillor Morio. Councillor Deloria, I believe he will be running a little bit late tonight. Result of the agenda for the 2000, or sorry, November 2nd, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the October the 19th, 2021 regular meet, council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, so moving on to receptions and delegations and hearings, 4.1. We have uh, the honor of having a special guest tonight with us, RCMP Staff Sergeant Joe Duncan, uh, new to the community and uh, uh, first time uh, attending our regular meeting. So we, uh, we uh, appreciate you taking the time, uh, Staff Sergeant, to uh, visit us here tonight. And uh, I'll let you... Uh, Go from here. Sure. So uh, thank, thank you for having me here today, Mr. Mayor. Uh, very glad to be here and finally being able to sit down and, and finally meet everybody in person. So so I thank everyone for that. So um, tonight for me, it's just a kind of an informal, just kind of a meet and greet and just to explain who I am, kind of where I come from, and just to seek some, some of the expectations that a council has of the RCMP. So uh, myself, I joined the RCMP in 2006 in Cardiff, Saskatchewan. Uh, after Cardiff, Saskatchewan, I went north to uh, Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. Uh, 2012, I transferred into Cross Lake, Saskatchewan, or Cross Lake, Manitoba, uh, followed by Moose Lake, and I spent three and a half years in uh, D Division Criminal Operations, where I was the uh, Emergency Preparedness Coordinator for the province, as well as a Division Policy Analyst. Uh, from there, I went to East St. Paul, and now in Swan River. Well, welcome to Swan River. Thank you very much, and it's been it's been great to be here. Um, the community's been welcome, very welcome and warm to my family, and uh, we enjoy our time here so far and look part being part of the community. So, um, I guess at this point, I would just like to ask council if there's any questions or concerns they might have in regards to the operations of the RCMP. Okay. So, any questions to Mr. Duncan? Go ahead, Councillor White. Well, first, I think thank you for coming. Thank you for your team that you work with that works with us. It's uh, very collegial, it's very, it's good, it's all very positive. And I, I think both entities, ourselves and your team, are, are open to constructive criticism of our questions. And without that, I don't know where we would be. But I actually, my boss at the end here suggested maybe I should have read the, the minutes, so I have, have read the minutes. So there's two or three little things that popped up there relative to, to your report. Yes. This is so thorough. Easy for me to understand, so it must be pretty easy. So I'm looking at reported uh, crimes, and the, the least uh, least act activity relative to crimes, if, depending on how you interpret it, is from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. because only 7% of crimes are reported at that time. Well, our team has talked about the that's when they're re the least amount reported, but there's nobody there to report them in my mind from 7 from 3 a.m. to 7 p.m. So they're reported after that. So those crimes, I believe, are being committed there when you have the least uh, amount of your team out there for all sorts of reasons. So I'm not sure that's a lies, damn lies, and statistics. So I, I think that's one of those stats that's uh, quite misleading. Okay. And um, what we do is we have our police report occurrence system. That's called PROS. That's what we refer to. It's our operating system that um, when, when, when crimes and files are reported to us, that's how we track it. So the crime might be reported at nine o'clock in the morning, but our, our statistics go when the call happens. So they'll report it at nine, but the current time, let's say between three and four. So that's done through our post database. Even if the occurrence is reported after the fact, it goes by at the time that it was reported. And, and I accept that that's when it's reported, yeah. but that doesn't mean that's when it happened. Okay. Okay, so, that, so I've always uh, felt a, a little vague to me because I know nothing about it. 
nighttime criminal activity. But I suspect there's some other way out there. There, there might be some mitigating factors in that and, yeah. and something that we can collectively work together to, to try and resolve. I think increasing public awareness of when to call and yeah. maybe not calling during those peak hours is it might lead to those those numbers as well. And it's a quite where I don't know how you, how you solve that one to be, to be honest. So look at some of your numbers. You're uh, three hours and thirty two minutes return, uh, transporting prisoners and Correct. or uh, all sorts of different people mentally challenged. Right. Now it's thirty uh, three hours thirty two minutes if you don't stop. So my concern has always been that. You talk about members, so I'm assuming there's more than one in the police car? Situational, yes. So when we're transporting mental health people to Dauphin, to the fourth floor, I think it's called, or to Brandon, that's, that's me, you guys are spending so much time, which you have to do and you should do, but they're, they're out of the area where, in my mind, where we need you more. Absolutely. Has government got any connections with you relative to replacing that, finding a special officer? To just transport people? Okay, I know that our criminal operations branch of Winnipeg is working with the province of Manitoba and I know they're looking at uh, the legislation and they're actually visiting that right now because yeah you're right it's, it's not a core policing function and it's something that we do just in on what's legislated as of right now. I know but you're right that three hours is, in commute time does not account for time spent at the hospital time spent waiting to be admitted, and time, it's, that's just a snapshot of the travel time itself. Yeah. And that's the RCMP, and they, like, this has been around forever, as you well know, and we've met with the D Division people, and, we, and they shared that with us, we met with the Minister of Health, relative to the eventually challenged people, and they keep saying they're going to do something, they're going to do something, and I've heard it uh, roughly 12 years now, and I'm assuming D Division is pushing from your end also. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a core police function, yeah. and that's what we want to do. We want to return to providing service to our community and not have members, member or members out of the community doing uh, non-core police functions, such as uh, prisoner transports or, or mental health transports. Can our council help you in that world? Because I, 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 I can, I'm here, do tell me if I can. I think I can speak for our team. We, we want to work with you. Right. We are I think anything you can do to advocate in our favor would, would definitely help and definitely go a long way. So any 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 recommendations you have to you know would, would definitely help us. And then I'm assuming we'll go to you first always. Correct. Yeah. That would be a logical process. Right. And then if we're on the right path, you'd do what you have to do. Right, right. Hey, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, and, and on that, you know, we've been discussing that whole transfer situation. Uh, I, I, Think that we understand that they do it a little bit differently on the east side of the province and what they do on the west side Correct. and it's something that we have been lobbying the government and when we be when we're attending the amm uh this month later this month it'll be something that we will be continuing to bring up with uh, uh amm justice minister health minister uh, because it's just something that we feel that is is putting just too much pressure on an already uh, over pressured uh police force that we have Thank you very much. Anything further? Councillor Bobbing? Just looking at the statistics here, uh, when you say there's so much crime in the town and so much in the rural there, so when the bad guy is picked up and let's say I'll use the town of Camsack for instance and he lives there, is that considered rural or is it if the crime is in the town of Swan River, is it town of Swan River? It's town of Swan River. So is there, there's no distinction I guess from our ratepayers to anybody else's ratepayers, I guess is what I'm trying to say. In, in a municipal contract? Yeah. Or, well, sorry, I don't that, understand yeah, the question. Yeah, I, I'm saying if the, if the criminals come from outside of the statistics and there's all this crime in the town of Swan River, but it actually isn't the town of Swan River residents committing the crimes. Correct. It, is it rural or is it town? If they're coming into town, it's, it's based on where the crime happens. Okay. So if it happens right downtown Swan River, then it would be scored under municipal. If it ha happened outside of the, the town limits, it would be considered rural. Okay. Any other further questions? Councillor White? How's uh, COPP working out for you guys? Uh, COPP has actually been kind of spearheaded by uh, Sergeant Henson. Uh, he's got quite a few people out and about. With COPP, uh, the, the information that we're gathering has been fantastic thus far. And it's been a, a great program, and I've got nothing but good things to say about it. Perfect. Okay. Anything further? Councillor Bobbick? Just one more question. Sure. Um, 
I know somebody that drives a Harley, but I just this town seems to have really loud vehicles. Okay. I, 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 and maybe it's just me, but I, I go to other Goff and I go to Yorkton or wherever, and I just don't seem to hear. Here it seems to be um, probably where I situate, where I live, it seems to be an easy place to open it up. But I mean, at the same time, is there much effort put into loud noises? There is. Um, the problem is, is that if they see the big white billboard yeah. with the blue decal on it, nobody's yeah, nobody's yeah. tromping on the gas, right? It's when they're, they they know that no one's there. Um, if the community can help us by providing us information of vehicles, then there's measures that we can take. Okay, thanks. On, on that note, typically uh, by now we would have been treated with some of that uh, just outside this uh, window, but uh, okay. it's quite uh, odd that we haven't been treated to that yet. Right. Right. So that Thank might come a little bit later. Yeah. Anything further? So Staff Sergeant, do you have anything else? Not at this time, thank you. Just thank you everyone for having me tonight. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming. We'll talk to you a little bit later. Thank you. And we appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, 6 and 6.1. Uh, we see that there is a request. So result that the COPP donation request letter be accepted as received. Moved by... Councillor White, second Council Friesen. Discussion? Councillor White. Oh boy, I, I hope we can help them somehow. Uh, we have a bunch of flashlights, or we have a gas coupon, or uh, food, or three or four different issues there that it's uh, pretty important. I think that we can hopefully help out. Go ahead. I did ask, uh, I did ask if there was a, a scale or, or an amount that they were looking for, but the answer was you know, basically anything that, anything, you know, they're looking for a cash donation, but uh, anything that we can provide would be helpful. Okay. Further discussion? Councillor Bobbitt? How many people are we talking about? How many vehicles? Uh, again, I, I'm pretty sure they have 22 volunteers right now. That's right. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure, I, I would guess that they're not all at the same time. I don't know what the shifts are like, uh, I don't know. Uh, again, I, I did ask for some details on what they're looking for, but uh, right now it's looking monetary so that they can determine. They, they are lobbying the, the whole business community, not just the town of Swan River. They are lobbying pretty much the whole chamber uh, for support. And so I guess, you know, we can, we can discuss this and, and uh, after maybe I have some of the information, if it's flashlights or whatever that we can provide, we can figure out something because I think that, Councillor White, you're right, you know, I don't think it'd be uh, a wrong thing or a bad thing for us to support in some capacity. Councillor White? Yeah, like, I'm assuming we would do something, but if we buy them, 10 flashlights for the 22 people. They would stay in the central depot when they pick up their badges, whatever they pick up. They gotta pick up their radios, and they pick up their radio and pick up the flashlight. But if they're talking to Ace over there and they're giving them 10 flashlights, that would be redundant. So I, they have to be more specific. You know. Yeah, I can ask if there's a maximum amount that council is looking for to donate. Uh, you know, I will ask how many flashlights do you need, and we can we can fill that order, and I just don't go over that amount. Or if they would rather me simply write a check, and then it's up to them to buy what they need. I like that. Uh, either way, we can we can fill the order with with the items they need, or simply provide a check. I'd be uncomfortable buying flashlights because if they're doing it with the whole town, I'm sure somebody's going to donate some flashlights. With a $200 cash or something of that extent, and if they run out to come back for more. Councillor Bobbick. Uh, just not, I, I, kudos to them for what they're doing. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I'll run it by a council if we maybe approach that each council member donates something to get them a tin card so they get out a lot of coffee during the night or something. So That's a good idea. Us put in, got them a tin card, and if somebody wants to come up with a bigger or the idea and the crash can whatever you want we can speak on that as the year goes on and they can uh, think council as a whole could maybe donate the tin card 
Sure. We can have that discussion once we're all, most of us are here, or majority of back again. This is on the letter to accept the letter, uh, to open up for further discussion after, I'm sure, as we go on. But we definitely, th I feel that the mood seems to be that we will come up with something to help COPP. So further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. Result of the building permits 6221 through 6921 with a total estimated value of $268,819 be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick? Uh, no, I'm just looking at the total, sorry. I'm looking at the Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.1. Resolve that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? You have the report there. Councillor White. Uh, internet point to point. What does that mean? Uh, that's oh, sorry. Right. That's out at the uh, landfill to give them more consistent internet out there and it's to do with uh, their security measures so we can go point to point from the shop and uh, it'll balance out funds wise because then we can drop the monthly uh, charge out there but then it'll give them more consistent internet so they can beef up their security. What does that cost? Uh, it was a thousand dollars for the point to point. And that, did you say it would well, like reduce our charges some also? Yeah, because then we won't have the monthly fee for the internet oh, out there. Okay. So over time it'll pay itself back and it'll actually save money, but it'll also help out because then they'll be able to uh, have beefed up security out there. Okay, thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Bobbick? Uh, just looking at engineering, what is the contract, contacting contractors regarding screens? Uh, which one was that under? Under engineering. Yeah, the internet, sorry, just... I'm trying to oh, screeners. Uh, yeah, that was for mixing the uh, sand salt. So a screener for the sand salt. For mixing the sand salt. So you don't have one? Uh, we did have one, but then it, uh, it went down last year, and uh, so we decided... Okay. Frame broke. Okay. Frame broke. Yeah, it was just so rusted stated, finally. to the point where there was nothing left to weld yeah. to. So, so have you had any interest? Uh, we did have one contractor lined up uh, and he was going to bring it. But then while we had him lined up, he rented it out to another company. Okay. Uh, so for this year, we're mixing it the old fashioned way. Okay. Thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Council reports. Start with Councilor White. Never done that before. No? No. Oh. I've been relatively busy. Uh, <clears throat> on the 20th of last month, uh, we attended a uh, Zoom meeting for Prairie Health and Health. And if there were a bottom line, is it encouraging uh, vaccines? The COVID is not going away very quickly at all. I think the numbers are 140 plus in Winnipeg today. And the big concern of Prairie Mountain Health is uh, beds and medical professionals because so many medical professionals are tied up now with uh, COVID issues. Other issues uh, through the elective surgeries are falling behind, and some of them are extremely serious. So uh, I encourage people to get the vax. Uh, the 26th, we had a committee of the whole negotiating with many entities was uh, much of a topic. On the 27th, uh, the airport commission, and we talked about fuel tanks, and I see we approved our card lock system, which should make everything easier. We talked about purchasing of land out, out at the, uh, the airport itself. Land use uh, draft uh, agreements to establish the commission. The, the opportunity was given for people to bid on managing the airport itself. 
and uh, some issues with the fuel crisis. So uh, a long way, but uh, I think it's so important, and hopefully uh, that airport will get used more in the future. Uh, the 28th uh, is worship. Myself and uh, CEO Poole met with uh, members of the Dauphin Town Council, their deputy mayor, Christian Lawland, and uh, Lisa Gadet. She I somehow thinks she's related to Councilor Morio, same last name, but she has a PhD, I noticed, in her, her diaries, which is interesting. And we try to find mutual solutions to our very same issues, by and large. Petty crime, drugs, break and enters. And I just really want to compliment your worship and his team for uh, making that happen because I think it opened an avenue for us to be able to work with another community not far away from us. And we actually mentioned at the end of it, the economic development, perhaps the two communities could work together. So opening doors, working with your neighbors, uh, seeing good on both sides, and trying to be better neighbors. I, uh, I like that concept a lot. Uh, on sport fish, I might get fined, but the, one of the things that we're trying to do is establish a kid's pond, which would be a fishery within bicycle distance of the town of Swan River. It could be in the town of Swan River for children who don't have access to boats, to families without cars, who can't find a place to fish. I'm sure we pick up much of the cost, if not all of it. We would uh, get the insurance, hopefully. We would get the fish in the pond. So if somebody's got some land in our viewing uh, listeners that might be open to digging it in and lining with geotextiles or gravel, uh, call me for sure and we would love to have a kid's pond. The Arctic char appear to be doing well in uh, Glad Lake. Why do I bring that up? Because it'll be the only place short of the Arctic that you can go to fish Arctic char. And hypothetically, that would bring economic development to our community. The sport fish certainly has an economic, economic development mandate that we try to do. And it looks like we're going to have our dinner again next year, drive through as, as we did this year. So uh, it's a chance for the community to get together with all of us. So I, I compliment the sport fish group for doing things for economics and children. That kids pond is a big deal. I'm not sure why it hasn't happened. We'll make it happen. And that's it. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bobbitt. Uh, no, not too much to report, just on uh, Councillor White's uh, topic there, you could maybe sport fish could speak with watershed or maybe something involved with uh, provincial engineering that they can go through. It would be maybe some I would speak to the manager there. I, I can't say for certain, but it would be worthwhile conversation. Uh, with that, I'll just go back to the rural program that's happening at the watershed again. Uh, if anybody knows of some land and don't take me wrong here, there's, well, there's about four different items there. Uh, riparian, buffer, potholes, wetlands, like that, that they will pay a portion of money per year for to leave it as it is and it can be farmed through, but as long as it's not filled in and there's lots of little rules to it, but if anybody knows of anything, that would be the place to go and again, talk to the manager there and, and they would... Uh, the manager is? Eddie. Eddie Shaw? Yeah. Thank you. That's how things happen. Somebody knows somebody who knows something. Bingo, we got a kid's place. No, I'd love to have that in the paper somehow. We're looking for a place to make a kid's fishing goal in town or close to town. It's huge for all these little rascals that have nothing to do. Uh, just to really answer anything, is, is, is there going to be a time in the near future when uh, councillors are appointed to committees and stuff like that? Like, so I really am not. Yeah, we're gonna we're I, we're gonna go through that. We're gonna okay. do that right away shortly. Okay. I do apologize for that. A couple more bills, we'll get. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Friesen. Um, curling has started. Just if anybody's interested, um, and also the urban forest um, people. Um, worked with the staff from Irina, Earl, and his crew. And they went down the north side of Main Street, and they dug into the hard clay, and they put in a basin of some kind, and they watered all the trees. And while they were doing that, uh, Mrs. Snellgrove was pruning, and 
she was very impressed with the help that she received and we just wanted to give kudos to Earl and his crew. I've got along. Thank you. Yeah, that was outstanding. I, I watched some of that one day and yeah, it was really good that the crew was out there helping with that because I think it was much needed, uh, some of the trees. So, Okay, for myself, uh, I guess it was already mentioned already that we had our meeting with the City of Dauphin, uh, some of the members of council and, and uh, mayor, um, as was spoken, that we did speak about our common grounds and, and issues with crime. And uh, in other ways, perhaps opportunities that we can grow uh, each, you know, for both of us, maybe economic development or whatever. But definitely, I didn't know what exactly what to expect, and it was really pleasant actually. And it was a great meeting. We do have a lot of things in common, and that I think will help us to uh, work together with lobbying the province on different items such as crime, if we talk about uh, the transfers, the mental health patient transfers and so forth, but that is, again is something that I, I look forward to and, and I could tell that they're, uh, they were pretty excited about it too. So it was, it was a really good exercise for us to go through and I look forward to meeting up with them at the convention and perhaps uh, future meetings that we can have and perhaps uh, at some point in time involve uh, the city of uh, the Paw as well. Um, I'd like also like to take the time right now to acknowledge a pretty special man who passed away here a few weeks ago, Mr. Dennis Cole. Uh, everybody knows who this man was in this community. He's an outstanding citizen for his community and also for his uh, faith and I think that uh, many people will miss him. I know the several community boards that he stood on or, or uh, uh, helped out with. Uh, so we do pass on our condolences to his family and friends. November the 11th, I encourage all to take some time to take a few moments to reflect on the men and women who have either have given the you know, finals, the, the supreme sacrifice and uh, or fought for our freedoms that we have right now and we shall uh, take the time and and we will remember them lastly uh, i'd like to congratulate newly elected premier stephenson on her leadership bid uh, and who has now been uh, sworn in as the next premier of the province of manitoba i look forward to uh, meeting with her in Winnipeg at the next convention, as well as uh, working with uh, her new cabinet and, uh, and making our, our voice heard again. So we'll be pushing several things that we had an opportunity to meet with her last month and uh, see how things go. But she's going to be a busy person and, and looking forward to seeing uh, the new cabinet uh, this uh, next term is, uh, or session is opened up. So basically that's it for me. And uh, we'll move on. <clears throat> CEO report. <clears throat> yeah, just uh, if there's any questions on the on the written report submitted, I can answer those. Just to let council know, I'm just trying to get a few of these things knocked off. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to hold the next strategic planning session, which is really a a budget meeting uh, at the end of November. I have to meet with my managers uh, this Thursday to pick a date of when our budget documents are going to be finished to present to council, uh, but we are working on it. Uh, I did have a, a tour with our clerks. Uh, you know, they, they talk about the utility quite a bit, but they've never actually seen the wells or the water treatment plant or anything like that. So. It was good for them to see what our guys do and you know what they talk about every day but have never seen. So I think that was pretty important. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, a lot of things happening with the airport commission. Uh, the RFP will go out soon, so every municipality will be given an opportunity to bid to manage the airport. Uh, and as Councillor White mentioned, uh, we will be getting a, a card box system out there. So that hopefully happen early next year. Just a couple of highlights. And drafting a, a vaccination policy which is coming to council once uh, once I pass it through the managers and uh, the union. Okay. Councillor White. 
couple of questions. Uh, firstly, thank you for uh, sending that letter to Amy Shaw. That was uh, well written. I appreciate it. Uh, getting for the, the beginning of preparing a purchaser of meeting summaries, I would encourage you to uh, maybe reconsider that set, that last sentence. We've exhausted all logical, some non-logical interpretations. May be true, but I'm not sure that we can be out there. And the other uh, thing is, in the last page, and I don't know if that will happen now, you're uh, hoping to meet the business consortium and the concerned citizens group. Uh, the concerned citizens group is no more. All right. So uh, they've disbanded, and their money, a little bit, they had eight hundred dollars went to the community foundation. So I, I can't see that happening. So that's about it. I guess just to add a, a couple of things, the, I did talk to the Iron Mountain and the, they are agreeing to host the next G4 meeting. I know we're, we've proposed December 6th if we want to get it done before Christmas. Other than that, I'm guessing uh, the second Monday in January. But uh, Council will know as soon as uh, it's booked to, with the, an agenda. But we have let them know that uh, for our two topics, uh, the airport and NISE. Did they um, say that they were going to send them an invite for November or December? As soon as as soon as we decide on a date, then we'll, they will send an invite to everybody. Yeah. How's that going to happen? Hmm? Well, it'll be through. I guess once the CAO was or I should say the CAO of Mountain contacts your council. Well, it'll. We're trying to hope for December sixth, the Monday, the first Monday in December, just to get it. Going, okay. but, uh, yeah, we need confirmation from our council. Okay, Councillor White. December six works for me. I think we can't do enough of this kind of activities where we're bringing our neighboring councils together together to break bread, whatever the term is. Uh, to uh, we haven't seen them. I think we can, we've got to get together with our, with our extended family and the other councils and talk casually about how to do better. If, if, if we can maybe send out an email for that, because uh, we do have some counselors that are not here tonight, and if we can maybe get a, a, a email gone out or go out tomorrow, and just uh, do a request, I guess if we can see if December the sixth will work. I know it will be fine with me, but all right. Anything further, Councilor Balbeth? Uh, Conrad's apartment is here waiting on quotes, so does that mean that the town's monitor is going to be doing the demolition? Not unless council, we, we need council approval, but those quotes are so old and they were kind of estimated, and I believe high, so we've, we've gotten uh, multiple contractors who reached out to their, that are going to put in a quote, we think they can be a little more competitive in the first round. So but, have uh, we been in conversation? Or can we be in conversation with the insurance company to see where this is going? Or? We have, and the response is, uh, I don't know if I can say, uh, they're, they're estimating it to be finalized in a, you know, somewhere between 10 and 16 months from now. Which would mean? Which would mean that if we do nothing, it stays there for 10 to 16 months. So that, let's say we do something and we occur to cost in 10 or 16 months, when it comes back, can we get those costs back from the insurance company? Uh, depending on the decision, possibly. Yeah, yeah. But there's a risk that we may not. In your, in your quotes for demolition there, was there contractors that would grind right on spot? to the landfill for cover? Uh, we, we are looking for the cheapest option possible and everything is being mentioned from that to... Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. under the understanding that that's done and there's no dumping fees yeah. or tipping fees. Yeah. So it, yeah, it would require that shredder to come from LPE. Yeah. yeah. So all, all options are on the table. Okay. So, so we'll see. There's a timeline on that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll see what that comes out of. Uh, Council White. It's not that I intended or wanted to happen. 
But in the wildlife world, if you get a decadent spruce bog, for example, they put a barrier around it and they burn at it, and that rejuvenates that soil. It, it, is there some sort of mandate within the fire department? This place got on fire again recently. Could we not put a berm around it, protect the surrounding areas, and let it go? Uh, I guess we we did discuss that. Um, we would have to accept that our you know our forces would be there for quite some time. It burned for quite some time already, and a very small percentage of it actually burned. So we'd be tying up our men for quite a long time. Yeah. Fire, fire chief would want to add to that. Uh, I know that's the number one concern, and the second one is obviously uh, uh, buildings and property surrounding. Yeah. We have to ensure nothing happens. I appreciate the chief's comments. Uh, my comment would be absolutely not. Um, just because of the liability, if that thing got away across the street to Ace or another property, we'd be liable. Not to mention tying up our forces if there was another fire, an accident, something else going in town. Yeah. Um, our job is to protect property and put fires out, not the opposite. And I think further to that too is, you know, uh, if we can prevent a fire from burning, uh, like uh, Chief Rorschach just said, uh, and prevent anything that is not very environmentally friendly that's being exposed to our environment. So, Councillor Bobbick. So, am I under the understanding that the fencing that's around that site right now is being paid for by the council member? It's charged back. Charged back to? It's charged to the uh, and the only way you're going to get paid for that is if the insurance comes in. Okay. Yeah. I think that if there's any more discussions, we talk about insurance and all that, we'd have to do that in camera. We should okay. not be doing that right now. Okay. Any further discussion on uh, the report? Okay, all in favor? It's carried. 8.1. Result of the D Director of Public Works. 721, the Protective Services. You missed it. Oh, how did I do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see it was around here. I did miss that, sorry. Result of the September Protective Services report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, Councillor White. Uh, just a compliment, uh, Chief Podorczyk and his team. I notice uh, in the in the uh, municipality of Minnetonka Minnet Bozeman, the guys put 32 man hours uh, in the fire on the 16th of September at LP. And boy, if you guys weren't there protecting that uh, wonderful facility, I'm not sure where this little town would be. And it's nice to know that you have the staff from within the community to get out there and help out in the Minbo area. The other one I noticed that you had nearly 40 hours in Swan Valley West putting out grass fire. And it's nice to know that you have a team and the technology and the abilities to do that kind of thing. So Swan Valley West and Minimo, I'm sure are appreciative of the work that our town fire department does. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eight and 8.1, resolved that the Director of Public Works be authorized to amend the landfill fee schedule to add a line item for spray foam tanks. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion, Councillor Bobbick. Did the spray foam tanks not go with the propane tank? Uh, Nope, the propane tanks will get picked up by propane companies for free because uh, they recycle them, uh, but they won't pick up the spray foam tanks and, uh, and they don't fall under product care either. So there's a disposal fee for the spray foam tanks and so because of that we weren't accepting them because we were just accepting the ones that we could cover either under product care or with the propane recycling. Uh, but I just wanted to add a line item for this so that contractors that use the tanks once or twice a year have a place to drop it off because 
Millis picks them up like they already come to our state to pick up all the household hazardous waste and they'll give us a big, they call it a Gaylord box, it's just a cardboard box with a liner in it and then we can fill it up from all the different contractors, recover our costs and then that way contractors either don't have tanks that they have to keep for 10 years until they get enough of them or they won't be tempted to dispose of them in ways that they shouldn't. Okay, thank you. Councillor White. I don't know what a spray foam tank is. I uh, mix the two of them together and then you can use it for insulation. That's the expanding foam? Yeah, so like the major uh, spray foam contractors, they get it in like large quantities because they're doing big areas. But these ones, you know, if someone's just doing a little bit in their attic or in a shed or something like that, they can buy a couple of tanks, they mix together, and it creates an insulating foam. Thank you. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.2 Resolve the grant request to the Swan Valley Citizens on Patrol program for Veterans Community Hall. Legion room rental fees in the amount of $93 be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bovic. Discussion? Councillor Bovic? That's where they meet before they start there. Uh, that's where they met this time. I, I'm sure they have meetings. You know what? I don't, I'm not even sure. I know they have other meetings, but I don't, I don't know what the agenda was on this, why it was larger where they needed the legion room, but they are asking for a grant to pay for that expense. Oh, I don't know. I guess the reason I'm asking, I, I thought if this was a reoccurring thing all the time instead of approving a grant every time for the rent, yeah. they would approve. That I'm not sure. I know that they had meetings outside of this, so. Okay. Okay, well maybe they have a mass meeting, 22 people. I have one. Okay, no, no, no. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 10 and 10.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28213 to number 28241, totaling 362,911 and 33 cents as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 4974 to number 4982, totaling 87,345 and 81 cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits in the amount of 1,561 and 79 cents as per Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling $600 as listed on Schedule D. Direct deposits in the amount of $2,058.31 as per Schedule E. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bovic. Discussion. Councillor Bovic. Uh, number 282370, Sanitized Garden Gloves. I'll let uh, Recreation Director Florichuk answer that one. All right, can you repeat the check number, Councilor Bobbitt? Uh, 282370. It, it was Lana's purchase. Uh, I just figured it. Oh, is that the one that um, was Rosie picked up for her for the community gardening grant? Was yeah. Part of the um, healthy living grant? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, there was a sale. Yeah, the, the children each got a pair of gardening gloves along with their gardening kits. Uh, that was part of that healthy together now grant. Um, and then yeah, CAO pool picked them up. Well, he was. I'm not sure where, but yeah, but. It was, actually, I had, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> when, when I had my mother uh, purchase these uh, from Costco, it was due to a sale. Obviously, we won't do this again, but because uh, it's not the way we do things. But uh, it, the town did receive the sale, and that 
that's what happened now. I, I, I'm, I'm still asking, like, we bought sanitized garden gloves to work in the garden, the community garden? Yeah. Or? Now, now that I can't answer. These were, these are gloves. I don't know what, why these certain gloves were needed, but. Well, if you can give me the answer at a later date, that'd be fine. Yeah. Okay, so you can uh, ask uh, Ms. Um, Lana, I guess, if, if she can provide some information on what that was all about. Yeah. Okay. For the discussion, Councillor Bobbick? Just on the price of your grader there, just roughly speaking with, uh, speaking with Mr. Poole there, uh, over the years of that grader that was purchased, the one 40 years ago, I roughly figured it out that that grader in the lifetime has cost you $830 a month. It's extremely low, and by the town of Swan River's standards of replacing the equipment where it needs to replace shows that in the future this is how things should be done. Like, um, I always go back to the fact that if you, once you're in place and you have your equipment, make sure you keep it up and your figures will still come in low instead of running them too long and not getting top dollar for it. Cause I wouldn't, I can't remember what the price was you purchased that grader for, but I do believe you got a very, very good trade in value for that. So kudos to the staff for looking after things and uh, making everything run cheap. Okay, good for the discussion. All in favor, it's carried. 10.2. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2021 included $300,000 for a grader to be borne by the machinery replacement reserve, and such grader has been purchased at a cost net of trade-in and GST of $298,893.80, therefore be it resolved that $298,893.80 be transferred from the machinery replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Councillor Delo sorry, Councillor White. Seconded by Councillor Bovic. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Ten point three. Resolved the signing officers for Swan Valley Employment and Training Projects account at Swan Valley Credit Union be Diane Rooks, Dare Poole. Terence Ganita, and that two signatures or online approvals be required for all transactions. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Thirteen resolved that pursuance to sections one fifty two three of the municipal act, council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items that will be discussed will be purchase service meeting and RCMP. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Resolved this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at nine oh nine p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Bobic. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. We're adjourned.